It is Ford Tremor day, F-350 day that is, gasoline engine day. This will be the first day I've actually driven the truck. So I'll give you some ideas and reviews. And the first thing that I always do when I buy a new car is the tire pressures. Tire pressures are always incorrect. That is a huge challenge. And it's because dealers have cars that sit on lots, sometimes for months and months. So the manufacturers typically put an extra 10 to 20 pounds of pressure in these tires just because of the fluctuation of tires. And when you buy a new car, the smartest thing you can do when you get it home is check the tire pressure. You can ask the people at the dealership to check it too, but if anything, uh, check it when it gets home and check it in the morning when uh, the temperature is cooler because when you do your tire pressure readings, it's always the cold pressure tire reading, not the warm pressure tire reading. So it's better to be able to check it when the vehicle hasn't been driven or you haven't driven it very far. When you're looking for your tire pressures, typically they are right inside your door jam. And there you go, see? We have 60 PSI front and 80 PSI in the rear. So let's check that out and see how good the tires are inflated. Time to start the tremor. Let's see how she sounds interior-wise, yeah? I really think the new exhaust is in order for this truck. Give it some life. Need life. Here goes our drive, even though I've driven the truck already, so not to mislead you here watching. So got the tire pressures all correct. 60 PSI up front, 80 in the back. Each one was off. Too high in the front, too low in the back. So now let's see how this drives. And if, you, if you're a Ford guy, you know with this big solid axle up front that you get a little bit of a walk out of these trucks. That's something that I do notice more in these heavy duty Ford trucks, F-250, F-350, F-450, and uh, and this, I don't notice as much as in the, in the Ram trucks I had, so uh, it is a little different on that type of uh, front end feel. So, in big tires, I could, that's going to add a little bit, but I'm a Jeep guy too, so uh, this thing's pretty damn calm compared to a Jeep, if you know that story, if you know one of those. So far, really quiet, rides really smooth. I mean, I'm amazed, being it's a one ton truck that she's riding as smooth as she does with a uh, suspension lift and bigger tires. And just being she's a one ton uh, suspension where I mean, that's very taut suspension to handle the heavy, heavy weights. It'd be nice to have a little bit more of a grumble out of exhaust for the gasoline engine, which I think that an upgraded exhaust would be favorable to give you a little bit more of a fun factor here. Take off here and kind of get her into her a little bit, but nothing radical. Kind of still breaking her in. Oh, yeah, nice pickup. We got a little bit of rumble there, don't we? Not much, but oh, just really, really strong. This V8 motor is really strong. And if the diesel's in here, diesel's, as you know, has the torque to the hill. The horsepower is around the same. This is a 430 horsepower on motor. Definitely a road truck and over the road truck. You could definitely drive this to Florida or wherever you're going and uh, you'd be very, very comfortable. Seats are comfortable. Got a heated seat, heated steering wheel, all the auto climate control, which I sometimes think people don't understand that. I'll talk about that a little bit in this hour, another moment. Now, we're at a good speed, and interior noise is really nice. The front end feels a lot lighter because I have the F-250 and F-450 trucks with the diesel motors. So you really can tell a difference in this front end on how she kind of uh, just doesn't have that heavy tank feel to her. A little bit more nimble. 
And I think that also radiates back into the front end ride with that heavier front end, you know, as you know, that's going to add energy, that extra weight to kind of come back through the frame into the interior of the truck. So this definitely is going to be a little lighter and uh, a little bit more of, I think, less jarring type of uh, truck, even though it's a one-ton truck. And the gas mileage, I know, is going to be probably one of the inquiries on this, even for myself. I, I'm already thinking it's a 10-mile, maybe 12-mile per gallon truck, and which that's what you're going to get out of the gas motor. Sure, the diesels. Mine usually get about 15, maybe 16. The newer diesels that I have, I just never see this 18 to 20 miles per gallon like everybody talks about. I don't know. Maybe it's there, but I really think the it's a five mile, I would say it's a three to five mile per gallon difference from gas to diesel, but gas is getting so cheap. I mean, good, goodness gracious, uh, you know, you're probably not spending any more money at the end of the day because the prices of gasoline are going down and diesel is always usually good 30 to 50 cent more a gallon. All right, getting her off the first gear and our thing is nice, this new 10 speed auto, which I, I really like that. She just shifts like butter. I mean, my gosh, this is the, this transmission just sweet. I mean, wow. We're in ninth gear. I mean, nope, we just hit tenth gear. I mean, just really. Just got myself a USB cable to plug in my iPhone. It's really nice about this new technology is you get the Apple Play. We like the Apple Play. We like that. It's really neat, the iPhone 11, you can be doing other things while the Waze is on. We're maneuvering around the big old parking lots. She's a big truck, which I like that. Either you're kind of a big truck guy or not. <laughs> it's a lot of vehicle. Really, really quiet as you can tell. They've done a really good job on the design of this truck. Especially that nice new gas motor. And also, sincereness, I wouldn't have bought this truck if it didn't have a 7.3 motor. That's what drew me to this truck. And I even weighed my options on just getting the 7.3 gas motor in just the regular F250, F350, Limited, XLT, Lariat, Platinum. And uh, just about went that direction in all reality. And I drove the F250 non tremor. And then I drove this truck with the Tremor, both having the 7.3 gas motors. And it really is a, a, a big difference. I mean, you, you wouldn't believe that, you know, and I get that. But I'm not, a, I'm not a journalist. I'm not being paid by these car companies to tell you the way I feel about things. So uh, there is a substantial difference in the Tremor trim and how you feel the truck feels over the non-Tremor feel. And to me, the Tremor feels just a lot nicer, actually. <laughs> Even though it's built for the off-road, uh, it doesn't feel like it as far as the comfort and ride. So, uh, and the smartest thing you can do, like I did, is just drive the Tremor if you actually can find one. I mean, that's kind of the language right now is be so lucky to get one to a degree. They're out there, but not, not by a lot because it's such an early time of the build. And... Uh, I'm sure as time progresses, you'll have a better chance to find a dealer that has one. But if you do, definitely do the back-to-back -back drive. Tremor versus the uh, the non-Tremor package. Driving around town here, getting an idea of being in traffic. And so you really can feel the size of this truck, meaning you got a lot of truck underneath the in. And something that I'm really noticing and I really like about this truck is there's no rattles. This truck is just really solid. So there's no obnoxious noise coming through it. And uh, the transmission, you can feel her kick down, lower gears to really kind of grab her to help you kind of stop a little bit because there's a lot of truck and big tires. And uh, when you're going to break, you kind of feel that. So, but. Of all my big trucks that I have, it's always kind of the case. I'm right. If you're used to riding around with cars, which, and I have some really nice performance cars <laughs> that have brakes on them that stop instantly. So when you jump out of those and jump into a big truck like this, 
definitely uh, you got to change your attitude and how you're driving because you're not going to stop as fast. Uh, but it's a good thing, not a, uh, a bad thing here. And uh, she gets up and gets out of her way. I really think that exhaust system needs to come off. And uh, I think that would make a, I think it'd make a decent difference as far as getting a little bit more of a note out of this. But got to be careful, too, because I've done this other trucks. And then the inside interior noise is, is really bad. <laughs> it's like it's a drag. So there's a really fine line there. I just did my Jeep Gladiator, and that one is pretty mundane, but uh, she feels a little more spirited. And that's what I would think you'd get out of this truck as well. As we're gearing down at 10 speed, I mean, it's pretty crazy on how we're riding around in 10 speed autos. I mean, goodness gracious. I came from the era of four speed autos. Let's see how she does in the corners. Shabby. Come on out. Here a little gas here to get on to the main road again. The mirrors are really good. You definitely can see your blind spots. That's a blind spot monitoring, which is really nice. We are going to take the big truck through the drive through Do we clear? We got a nine foot clearance. Good thing I got a. I'm not sure we're good on that, right? Let's see how it. Nine foot? Oh, yeah, we're good. So now, Cutner. Cutner, Cutner here. Nobody's here. Yikes. What's that mean? So here we go. As we wait for our sandwiches at Chick fil A, there's so much technology in these trucks these days that you just, uh, too many things to overlook. So this actually has your adjustable steering wheel where it goes up and down and out. And then you have your adjustable pedals for your brake and your gas. That's one thing I didn't bring up, which, you know, Lariat. I'm assuming, but you have to order a certain package group. So when you buy Lariats, you don't just automatically get this stuff, even to the point like your tailgate. So there's a lot of things that add up on the, these vehicles, which they do get very expensive. It's crazy. Another thing I brought up earlier was the auto climate. I don't think a lot of people realize that auto climate, you know, that's an, that's an option, not standard. Usually it's standard high end vehicles, but not lower end vehicles. A lot of people don't realize if you take and you turn your uh, fan, you take your fan and you up your fan, you turn off the auto. So you're defeating the purpose of this feature. So for all of those out there, you need to realize that the auto is a proper setting, and then you go to your different uh, different temperature variations. Which here you go whatever you want it to be all right but once you take and you push that little button there to raise the fan or lower the fan you just turn off your auto so you're not going to control the proper temperature so keep in mind if you're getting too hot just turn it down okay when you turn it down on a colder day the fan picks up on a warmer day you turn it up she slows down so it kind of figures out what's going on outside the vehicle to know what direction you should raise or lower this to get the fan to be more uh, powerful in a way that there's no home link on this option out a truck just pretty uh another thing i forgot to mention nice led fog lights that's really sweet your toe hook up here in front. It's like a little rag. I don't know what that's all about, but they look all beat up and stuff.